ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टाएद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी श्रीमद भागवतम टेंथ कैंटो चैप्टर सेवन एंटाइटल द किलिंग ऑफ द डीमन तृणावर्ता टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी वन गोकुल सर्व आवृण्वन मुष्ण चक्रा चक्षुंशी रेणुभि ईरय सुमहाघोर शब्द प्रदिशो दिश गोकुल सर्वृण्वन गोकुल सर्वृण्वन मुष्ण चक्षुंशि रेणुभि मुष्ण चक्षुंशि रेणुभि ईरय सुमहाघोर ईरय सुमहाघोर शब्द प्रदिशो दिश शब्द प्रदिशो दिश गोकुल सर्वृण्वन मुष्ण चक्षुंशि रेणुभि ईरय सुमहाघोर शब्द प्रदिशो दिश गोकुल सर्वृण्वन मुष्ण चक्षुंशि रेणुभि ईरय सुमहाघोर शब्द प्रदिशो दिश चक्षुंशिरेणु 
Gokulam, the whole tract of land known as Gokula. Sarvam, everywhere. Avranvan, Avranvan, covering, covering. Mushnam, Mushnam, taking away, away. Chakshumshi, the power of vision, <coughs> Renu Vihi, by particles of dust, Yirayan, Yirayan was, vibrating. was vibrating, Sumaha Ghora, very fierce and heavy. Shabdena with a sound. Pradishah Dishaha entered everywhere in all directions. Translation and purport by Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. <coughs> Covering the whole land of Gokul with particles of dust, that demon acting as a strong whirlwind covered everyone's vision and began vibrating everywhere with a greatly fearful sound. Purport (coughs) Tranavartasura assumed the form of a whirlwind and covered with a dust storm the whole tract of land known as Gokula so that no one could see even the nearest thing. Om Ajnana Timiram Dhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadam Dikam One day Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Jaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vranga Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Ghascha Kripa Sindhu Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Mahasadiva Urabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 (coughs) 
the past times of the lord are um, not only very enchanting to the heart but also very instructive if we contemplate uh, with intelligence that is refined through regular hearing from the genuine representatives of the lord <coughs> this is another very beautiful past time wherein krishna who is just just one year old few days still left to turn one <coughs> lying on the lap of his mother <coughs> and understands that this huge whirlwind demon is going to come and carry me off with a desire to kill me not wanting to unnecessarily disturb his mother and arranging in such a way that she may keep him down he increases his weight well in advance even before trunavarta is arriving and mother yashoda when she notices that that his weight is increasing she's not able to bear it any more she puts him down gets busy with her work <coughs> and trunavarta servant of kamsa a very demoniac person with a demoniac mentality demoniac intention wanting to kill krishna comes in the form of a whirlwind that's a mystic yogi it's unimaginable that mystic yogis had such power in the previous ages today anyone has even a drop of it he'll be worshiped as a supreme and these are powerful demons so he comes <coughs> and as soon as he reaches near krishna krishna intentionally reduces his weight to that of a feather like a grass dry grass makes it easier for trunavarta to do his nefarious activity and effortlessly trunavarta lifts him up high in the sky actually one acharya gives the purport and the demigods were very <coughs> eager to have close look at krishna's face you know so they standing near the clouds they didn't get you know good view so trunavarta assisted that brought him close the Demi- demigods could actually see <coughs> and uh, when he was high up in the air then krishna increased his weight without increasing his size there's an amazing thing about krishna <clears throat> every aspect every part of his body demonstrated supreme strength in one particular prayer by i think vishwanath chakravarti thakur speaks about every aspect of krishna's body how he demonstrated the supreme you know anganyasya sakalendra vritti manti every part of his body in and of itself is complete <coughs> his fist the power of his fist was shown when he killed keshi just put his fist inside the mouth of keshi and he choked to death the power of his lips is shown when he sucked putna's life air while sucking the milk from her breast and also the poison <coughs> and the tip of his toe that was shown by when he destroyed shakatasura 
just effortlessly just touched him bus so in this way different demons that he killed he showed different um potencies of different parts of his body equally being powerful <coughs> so krishna without increasing his size increases his weight practically to the size the, the the weight of the universe quite up a mountain huge mountain and thronavarta was becoming too much and he realized that he started falling back so then he wanted to throw him off throw krishna off and however he tried krishna's just sweet you know little hands butter like soft hands you see very young children one year their hands are so soft their their grip is also according to them they are very tight grip but you can easily just you know get away from that grip if you want what to speak of one year even 5 6 year olds sometimes they become very stubborn father is leaving and i want also come i want to come take a ride in your motorcycle or whatever tells the mother father tells him keep her keep him back i have to go to some important no 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 and is catching of course very nicely he tries to distract but if he's not then forget it you know, i can't play around so here is a powerful demon <clears throat> living for 1 lakh years according to one of the sub puranas bhavi brahma vaivarth puran he was a demon and he was a pandyan king and he was enjoying with his wives in a river and suddenly durvas muni came and he went in front of him naked he cursed him he will become a demon and he will be delivered by krishna <coughs> so this powerful demon with all his might is trying to you know release himself from this grip of little krishna is just tiny with tiny little hands but he's just not able to do it and ultimately under the weight of krishna crushes on a stone slab in vrindavan he finished breaks his bones and dies actually his life is right in the air itself it is is finished then he falls and breaks down breaks his bones then of course yashodama picks up and all gopi picks up and then pick up pick him up and then pray etc <coughs> so here is a demon <coughs> who is carrying the supreme personality of godhead on his shoulder and actually gave pleasure to krishna he gave him a free ride you know some kind of a ferris wheel merry go round <laughs> something you go up and then you come down It's actually very wonderful the kids they really enjoy some part of it coming down is a little uncomfortable going up is nice similar uh, <coughs> incident we find even in chaitanya leela where little nimai was given a free ride by two thieves who carried the supreme personality of godhead on his sh- on their shoulder and were carrying him throughout the market they were attracted <coughs> not to nimai but to nimai's beautiful ornaments so with an intention to steal they just picked him up because they saw that no one is around lesson for the parents not to leave their kids especially well dressed and then you know unattended 
invitation for different people so nobody is there so they just picked up my hey my we're going to take you home child will take you home and he said oh really and one of them put nimai on his shoulder and talking to him very sweetly to keep his attention so that he doesn't start crying ah, you know mummy <laughs> people will know hundreds of people are watching right in the market so he's just talking as if you know his, his own kid own child and the other one just to make sure that he doesn't cry is taking sandesh and feeding him just imagine carrying personally carrying the supreme personality of godhead on your shoulder and feeding him and nimai accepted it krishna says in the bhagavad gita <laughs> he generally doesn't accept duryodhan wanted to give him you know chappan bhog but he didn't accept but he accepted the food offered by this thief with a evil intention nimai was enjoying enjoying the ride enjoying the sweet of course he bewildered them and they when they put him down thinking they would reach their house they found that it was actually jagannath mishra's house <coughs> so as we were discussing just 3 days back i was speaking on the same verse on the previous verses <coughs> a very interesting point that uh, just came to my mind that yashoda mai is also carrying and trinavarta is also carrying krishna but for one it is a burden of love and for the other it is a burden of the beast as shila prabhupada explains in third canto purport there are two kinds of burden the burden of love and the burden of the beast burden of beast means carrying like a donkey and um <clears throat> uh, when there is no love then it becomes a burden for a mother to carry her child is actually of course the child doesn't change when she is when the child is in the hand of a maid servant the same but for the mother it's a burden of love and for the maid servant who may not have love for the child who may have love for the remuneration that comes at the end and therefore it's actually a burden <coughs> so similarly uh <coughs> when we come to devotional service and we we feel nice we feel relieved from the burden of material existence so we have thrown off that burden the unwanted burden that prahlad maharaj says naivo dvije par duratye vaitaranya tvadvirya gayana mahamrata magna chitta shoche tato vimukha chetas indriyartha Uh, maya uh, maya sukhaya bharam udvahato vimudha he says naiva udvije he says for myself prahlad maharaj is telling the supreme lord lord narsingh dev na eva udvije i am not disturbed par oh my supreme lord duratya vaitaranya this material existence which is so miserable struggle for existence it's no more for me why because i am completely absorbed in your service in your remembrance mahamrata for me it's actually nectarian but 
शोचे तो आई एक्चुअली लेमेंट विमुख चेत अस इंद्रियार्थ फॉर जस्ट फॉर द सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन हू हैव टर्न अवे फ्रॉम यू एंड टू एंजॉय देअर सेंसेस इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड इट्स एक्सटेंशन दे आर क्रिएटिंग सो मच बर्डन फॉर देम सेल्स सो मेनी सेल्फ क्रिएटेड बर्डन इन द नेम ऑफ रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज many of them may be unwanted unnecessary necessities we create unnecessary necessities and to struggle to maintain that to procure and to maintain so much of labor unwanted labor that is labor of an ass there is a labor of love and there is a labor of an ass so that kind of a thing is called unwanted labor so much of struggle so i i i i pity them so when a conditioned soul comes into devotional service he is relieved of that burden so it's a wonderful feeling a feeling of relief from that kind of uh, ordeal or that kind of activities effort but then simply a sense of relief in and of itself cannot be a motivation to uh, continue in devotional service unless there is uh under the heart is into it and that is a labor of love or the, or the burden of love responsibility means burden burden means weight so weight carry you have to carry heavy weight so when uh, so in the long term <coughs> having come into devotion service if uh everyone actually looks for fulfillment of the heart everyone wants to put their heart into something because when we put our heart into something and we see something happening our heart feels fulfilled happy satisfied and that's actually most important it's not anything else it's ultimately state of the heart is your heart fulfilled satisfied happy then it really doesn't matter externals really don't matter so much so uh when that kind of a will be come to devotional service and if we sustain our devotional service simply based on the emotion of relief then there is no hope for the future unless there is um, fulfillment of the heart and that fulfillment is found when we actually serve as servant of krishna because that's our natural constitutional position and immediately that's why and vedyas was dissatisfied narad muni told him glorify pure devotion self pure devotion service purity is important because that's our natural constitutional position to love to serve to love and to serve is the natural constitutional position of the heart so unless that service is out of love and that love manifests as loving service it is actually not going to satisfy and devamrut maharaj solenes devamrut maharaj in his series of lectures in ukraine in russian art festival which is converted into a book called bhakti bhava beautifully 
uh, expresses a uh, mentions what is chaitanya leela chaitanya leela is a demonstration that there is no other position or no other position higher and better than being a servant of krishna advaita acharya wants to become a servant forgetting his lordhood godhood all of us want to be god now we may not agree as devotees here in the temple we ask how many of you want to be god we may not raise our hands but we all want to be controllers we all want to be enjoyers certainly we want things to be happen the way we want we want people to behave exactly the way we want we want the whole world to go exactly as we want so many expectations we expect everyone to do exactly what we want that's our expectation and we get tremendously disturbed if things don't happen the way we want so and so so that's the wanting to be god and here is the supreme personality of godhead mahavishnu he hates chaitanya mahaprabhu worshiping him even though mahaprabhu sees him as his senior uh, guru's god brother and worships him advaita acharya doesn't want it nityananda sankarshana karanodakshay garbhodakshay kshirodakshay the first expansion of the supreme lord even he is blissful and mad in ecstasy of devotional service so much so even the supreme personality of godhead wants to become a servant experience the joy of becoming the servant of the servant because he says i as a supreme enjoyer am not enjoying as much as my servants are that's the joy of serving but that service can also become a burden so much so that we may want liberation from devotion service <laughs> the shri vigraha bhaktisan sastri thakur has explained has become galagraha oh this dt has become a galagraha a big uh, burden on the neck <clears throat> why does it happen it is explained rupa goswami uh, elaborates and gives us that that is becomes uh, prayas prayas means unwanted labor atyahar prayasas so prayas means unnecessary labor so when there is no feeling for the of the heart into what we are doing then it becomes a burden and naturally everyone wants relief from the burden so there are different prayasa jnani prayasa udapasya namanta eva lord brahma says one kind of prayas is jnana prayas so prayas or endeavor that is done simply to equip ourselves with so much of knowledge but it becomes a heavy burden heavy burden on the head but it actually doesn't there's no heart into it it becomes a big endeavor then there is karma prayas karma prayas or knowledge so that we will be relieved i how to acquire knowledge so that i can be relieved from any burden and another one is karma prayas if there is no love then everything is a prayas uh dharma swanushtita pumsam vishwaksena kathasvya न उत्पादयेत यदि रतिम श्रमये वही केवलम इट बिकम्स अननेसेसरी लेबर 
fruitless fruitless futile labor if it doesn't lead our activity should lead to devotion or or love if it is not leading to love feeling for the lord then and that eventually in and of itself becomes big burden that service can become burden so therefore whatever we do in devotional service prayas is necessary because we are in conditioned life to come to pure life <coughs> some effort is necessary that prayas or what is that prayas prayas to hear and chant prayas to visit holy places in the association of devotees prayas to uh, serve the lord to serve the vaishnavas that's an endeavor but that endeavor is actually moving towards you know love anukulyasya sankalpo pratikulyasya varjanam this is the spirit this is the principle anything that is favorable is it leading me to that otherwise all rules and regulations can become a big burden even rules and regulations of the scriptures can become a big burden there is a there is a letter of the law and there is a spirit of the law if the spirit of the law is not understood which is our endeavor to understand the spirit of the law if you don't understand the spirit of the law simply following the letter of the law becomes burdensome it actually will becomes burdensome and we may prove ourselves right and still be completely wrong in terms of achieving the goal i just give some one or two examples how smallest things we can see this sometimes we become too fidgety about the rules or or, or too particular rather about the rules It should be exactly like this and all that something like karma kanda they are also karma kandis are also doing rituals and the devotees are also doing rituals but niyama agraha if you are doing the ritual just for the sake of rituals and not understanding the spirit then automatically it becomes futile one time a devotee right here in the temple hall a new person came a new devotee came and he saw a senior person devotee and he wanted to offer prostrate obeisances see in the beginning when we come to krishna consciousness if we maintain the same attitude throughout we will become pure very soon any one any object any person some semblance of devotion immediately we offer obeisances respect at the highest level also kanishta and uttama both always respect to everyone and everything in between comes the problem because there is familiarity and familiarity breeds contempt when ourselves and our ego are in the center or sense gratification is the center selfishness or egoism is the center then in then um, familiarity breeds contempt we see too much too close we hear too much we experience too much which is difficult for us to appreciate and therefore there is no respect and so but if if we understand the spirit of that law and follow the law not neglect the law thinking it is irrelevant and not accept it simply for the sake of acceptance but actually take the spirit of the law and do consciously knowing why am i doing what i am doing 
what's the purpose is it pleasing to krishna smartavya satatam vishnu vismartavyo na jatu chit if there is love there is remembrance i have come here to surrender my life to krishna i have understood after millions of lifetimes i have understood the goal of life is to please krishna to please guru to please vaishnavas to live according to the scriptures spirit of the law when we do that then familiarity only breeds to respect appreciation and intimacy but, but the struggle is to keep the spirit in picture <clears throat> the heart of the law understand the heart of the law and to understand the heart of the law we have to put our heart into the law why am i doing what am i doing otherwise years and lifetimes can pass that's why bhakti vinod thakur says there are two kinds of vaishnavas the swan like vaishnavas and the ass like vaishnavas when i heard this i got little why bhakti vinod thakur blaspheming devotees <laughs> ass like vaishnavas so yes there are two kinds of vaishnavas the swan like vaishnavas and the ass like vaishnavas and its sanskrit is saragrahi and bharavahi the swan has a special characteristic i found out you know they say if you give milk and water mix it extracts the milk and leaves the water i thought this is just a poetic you know kind of expression but actually i found out the swan has in its mouth is some kind of a acidic uh, secretion and when it if you give a in a container milk mixed with water it releases that acidic content into the water just like if you put uh, uh, lemon juice few drops into the milk with water what happens it becomes paneer like right it separate immediately it breaks and milk separates and so it releases like that and picks up only those particles of uh, hardened so uh, uh, hardened milk and leaves the water similarly in this material world mixed with three modes of material nature a highly introspective sage he extracts only those thing that is favorable for devotional service everything he neglects like a honey bee just takes without crushing the flower amazing the honey bee has a special characteristic it sits on the flower and through that stamen and actually it has a special you know uh huh thing no not a thing it's some kind of a hairy like whisker yeah something like yeah. So it introduces into the flower and just takes without crushing the flower it extracts the essence without crushing it we have to crush it to extract the essence of something crush the flower to extract you know gulab what is that um, to make uh, yeah the rose flower if you want to make this gulkan but the honey bee has a without it just takes extract the essence without disturbing anything he learns how in this particular situation what can i learn to come closer to krishna see the mercy of krishna please krishna serve krishna that's all if it is not beneficial gandhi ji's three mantras i don't see anything i don't hear anything i got on i just extract whatever is necessary and that is the saragrahi we find in the shrimad bhagavatam this great sage in the 11th canto avadhuta he traveled all over the planet and he just extracted from everything he was learning something 
That's a saragrahi. And therefore, he feels light. He feels elevated. Spirit and fire, these are the two things which go up. Everything else comes down. Spirit is always going up. High spirits. And fire, fire is also going up. Everything else in the world comes down. So more spiritually enlivened we are, extract the essence, the more we feel enlivened, enthused and inspired. In every situation, failure is a stepping stone to success. Through that failure, we learn, oh, this is it. Wonderful lesson. I can move ahead. And on the other hand is a bharavahi. One who simply carries loads and loads of instructions. And eventually those rituals become empty. Because they are empty, they become burdensome. Empty of the spirit. They become burdensome. There seems to be so many contradictions of the instructions. And therefore there is unnecessary argument. Which is what Pranavarta represents. False arguments. Because of not understanding the essence. If we don't understand the heart of the law, there is contradiction. So here is this new person, anyway, coming back to why I start, where I started. So this new man came and he offered obeisances to the senior person and the senior person blasted him. Don't you understand? Haven't you read the nectar of devotion? It says there, in front of the deities, you are not supposed to offer obeisance to another person. And that person was really shaken. said, what is this nectar of devotion? Some nectar, juice? Ah, go in the stall and buy it. It's a book. Full of instructions. And in, when this incident was reported by one devotee to another authority, a senior authority, he said, while instructing this devotee, a new devotee, the senior devotee broke another law. And that is, you should not get angry and chastise anyone in front of the Lord. So while executing one law, he broke another law. I remember many years ago, uh, we went to Jagannath Puri, 300 devotees, Solana Radhana Swami Maharaj, and about 300 of us, we went to Jagannath Puri many years, long back. And we went to Gundicha temple and next to Gundicha temple is a Gaudiyamat <coughs> where His Holiness Bhakti Vaibhavpuri Maharaj who recently departed two years back. He was in the early 90s almost. He was there. And uh, we all went and the deity was opened like this deity room and all of us sat. Small temple. We all sat there and watching and Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Maharaj was so happy, so happy to see Vaishnavas. Actually, he says, one of the things about Vaishnavas, if you don't feel happy to see another Vaishnava, something is wrong. You must feel actually happy to see another Vaishnava. Very difficult in Kali Yuga. So, he was happy to see 300 people. Immediately he said, Prashad! So, they immediately were cooking something and brought some you know, fruit salad they made and things like that. Or some fruits like that. In small cups, leaf cups. And they immediately distributed. Within 10 minutes, all his disciples ran and prepared Prashad. It was an unexpected visit. So he was so happy. We did Kirtan. By that time, they were prepared Prashad and it was given to everyone. And he said, hmm. So, we are facing the deities and he is sitting next to the deity, something like where that Mataji is standing and looking at us, facing us and he was telling, eat, eat, enjoy Prasad. <clears throat> so Maharaj told Madan Gopal Prabhu who was sitting next to him, he said, ask him, can we eat because the DT's curtain is open and we are not supposed to eat. And, and you know, in different temples, people are very strict about certain things. So Maharaj wanted to be very safe. He says, Ask him, um, he's asking us to eat, but you know, the curtain is open. Can we eat? Because we are not supposed to eat in front of when the curtain is open. 
so this devotee madam gopal prabhu went and spoke in his ear and he says maharaj uh, can we eat prasad prasad you know we need prasad can we so he is hard of hearing is because very he says ha ah, ha it is prasad it is offered it is offered <laughs> he thought he wants to find out whether this is offered or not yes yes it is offered <laughs> so he got bewildered and he came and sat next to maharaj maharaj said go and ask him again <laughs> said ask him whether we can eat because the curtain is open and again he went and he, little louder he says maharaj can we eat because the curtain is open he said ah oh, eat it eat it krishna will be very happy to see this devotee is taking prasad <laughs> enjoying prasad <sighs> big relief for us then we started eating so we got blessings of course that doesn't mean every time we do it but then the spirit is there like ah oh, krishna is happy to see so it it really unless we know the heart of the lord we can't know the heart of his laws because the law maker made law with some intention and if you know the heart of the lord we will know the heart of the law sadhavo hrudayo mahyam sadhunam hrudayam tvaham madanyate na janati na ham tebhyo managapi so actually because the devotees of the lord reside in the heart of the lord they know the heart of the lord and whatever the lord has made rules they know the heart of the rule also and therefore tarko apratishtho is very you futile to argue about issues you may be right technically but you may be totally wrong spiritually or or in in the spirit tarko apratishtho shrutayo vibhinna nasau muniryasya matam na bhinnam dharmasya tattvam nihitam guhayam mahajano yena gata sambandha therefore it is necessary that we very scrutinizingly study the scriptures so chaitanya leela is all about <clears throat> a demonstration of the lord the glory of the position of being a servant of krishna and the glory of serving in the association of devotees and experiencing bhakti bhav it is so nectarian that even the supreme lord wants to take the position of his devotee and that is the gift that mahaprabhu has come to offer that is the gift that shila prabhu pad has come to offer and unless we and how do we understand the spirit of these laws when we put our heart into whatever we do that is krishna consciousness to be conscious of not just what we are doing but why we are doing what we are doing is it really serving the purpose of that and that cannot be understood on our own therefore we need a guru therefore we need you know uh, a proper uh, environment discussing and then we can actually take and then it will be a burden but it will be a burden of love it will be a burden of love as it was discussing the other day prabhupa took up that burden to run an institution to run an international society big burden big responsibility so much anxiety so much headache it's not easy but that sign of love a burden of love and all the inconveniences that are undertaken in that service is actually an expression of love as bhakti vinod thakur mentions so it has to be taken relief of burden is not possible struggle for existence that's another one burden but simply mukti we cannot sustain for long we need to have a burden and that burden is burden of bhakti means a burden of love and when we take that up then by krishna because he is yogeshwar 
the biggest burden can still make you feel so light. Having taken all this burden, still you feel light. So light that you can dance and actually jump in the air. Very difficult for a burdensome, anxiety ridden person to say, Jan, dance. <laughs> can't dance. How can a person dance? How can a person smile also? Being anxiety means moroseness, depression. <laughs> the amazing thing, Prahlad Maharaj is feeling both. Tremendous lamentation. In the same verse he is telling, Mahamrata Magnuchita. I am blissful, my Lord, and simultaneously I am lamenting. Very difficult for this. And his Lord is also like that. As a Gaur Gopal Prabhu always mentions, you know, for nothing they've had, you know, two different emotions in his two eyes. In one eye he was angry like fire on Hiranyakashipu, and with another eye he was showing Karunamai. With great compassion he was looking at Prahlad Maharaj. Now, the best actor in this world, it's a challenge, it's an open challenge. Can any actor demonstrate these two emotions in two eyes? Impossible. One emotion prevails, but the Lord is simultaneous. Therefore, his devotees also. Advaita Charya, Shivas Thakur, Haridas Thakur and Shivas' brothers before Mahaprabhu's advent, they were relishing nectar and simultaneously crying out for people in uh, Navadvip. Simultaneously. Bliss, they are enjoying bliss and simultaneously they are lamenting. Because the nature of spiritual enjoyment or spiritual happiness, is makes your heart soft. And a soft heart cannot see sufferings of other living entities. Material happiness makes the heart hard. You become insensitive to the needs of others. Insensitive. That's basic. Selfishness makes the heart hard. I don't care what happens to the world. As long as I am happy. So this is the wonderful gift that the Lord has given. So from Pranavarta's burden to Mother Yashoda's burden. This is our goal of life. To move from one end to one extreme to the other extreme. One weight is crushing him down to death. The other one is a bigger burden actually. The burden of love, the burden of separation. As soon as Krishna disappeared in Trinodam, Mother Yashoda fainted with love of separation. She was serving everything for Krishna and now Krishna has disappeared. Immediately she fainted. So that love we want. And therefore, we are eager to accept this burden right now. The burden of rules and regulations with the hope that we understand, put our heart into it and understand the spirit and please Krishna. The essence of all laws are love and essence of all don'ts, vidhi and nisheda, do's and don'ts. The essence of all do's is do those things which increases your love for Krishna and please don't, don't, don't do anything which makes you forget Krishna or lose Krishna's association or worse than that, hate Krishna. Icha dvesha samuthena. We hated Krishna and therefore we have come here. But we love Krishna and we will go back. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhu. Before I say Srila Prabhupada ki jai, <laughs> Prabhuji raised his hand. <coughs> Yeah, thank you Prabhu for the class. You are mentioning about uh, how you have to put your heart into something. You know, if, if to experience Bhakti Bhava, you have to, for our services and everything, you have to put your heart. Now, the fallout of that is, when we put our heart into something, we also become attached. Now, we have 
heard that a devotee should also be detached. It's easy to be detached if you're not putting heart into something. And if you put heart into something, you become attached. So how to put your heart into some services and at the same time become detached? Are there any tips for that? <coughs> Try to understand the heart of putting one's heart. We are putting our heart into something to please someone. I am putting my heart into this service or this responsibility or this object to please someone. So if doing it in particular way pleases that person, irrespective of whether it pleases me or not, I'll do it. So putting our heart into that means to understand why we are doing what we are doing. That's all. Yes, your prasad or Bhagavad Prasad. And, and what's the proof of that attachment when you are told, when you are told, forget it. Just when the fruits are coming, you have watered the plant and everything, now the fruits are coming and about to pluck, leave this. This garden, store-like garden. You say, but what about that? This is over. Now this one. So we are not attached to the service, but we are attached to the person for whom we are actually if, if that is understood, then we do the needful. Okay. Harish, there is one announcement. Uh, we have one of our brahmacharis, His Grace Rajesh Narayan Prabhu. So his father left his body this morning at uh, Udupi. His name is Narayan Prabhu. So he is requesting all the devotees to pray for his departed soul. And we'll do that by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra once. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 